And the lead singer and lyricist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's just released this book about his life called Scar Tissue. Please welcome Anthony Kiedis. Cool to have you on the show. Thanks so much for doing it. It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. I love the outfit too. This is not what I don't. You've dressed up. This is very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, like I went this. to some trouble. You went to some trouble. Yeah. This is very cool. I like this. This is these are some cool threads. Thank it's you. all going well. Thank you for being here. So much pleasure. to talk about. First of all, I got to ask you about this. It's something that you. Uh, the, the, the music, of course, is amazing. But you guys are also very well known for your theatrics, the Chili Peppers. The business of going on stage completely naked, except for a sock. Each of you wearing a strategically placed yeah. sock. When did you do that on stage for the first time? You want to talk about the sock. I want to talk about yeah. the sock. I am obsessed with the sock. Yeah, um, it's actually a, an ancient Irish tradition. Um, something that we studied in school and thought we might execute it on stage. An ancient Irish tradition. I am 100% Irish. You've the thought of that. just putting a sock on and running around yeah. would never occur to me. No. Uh, actually, we were playing a strip club mm -hmm. in the early 80s on Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood, California. And we thought, if they're going to be naked, we should be naked. And they had pasties, so we right. went with the sock. So you went with the sock, and then you played a show with the sock. But what's interesting is that if there's ever a guest musician who plays with you, a famous musician wants to sit in with the Chili Peppers, and you guys go with the sock, that musician also has that to do correct. it. Is that right? That's that the rule. Correct. If I wanted to jam with you guys on flugelhorn or something, I would have to be naked except for a sock as well. That is the tradition, yes. Do people, are they, they go with it though, do they? Uh, John Lurie did it. Oh, that's cool. In yeah. New Orleans, you know John? Sure. Yes, and, uh, and our good friend Tree did it and actually had a little trouble and, and nearly got himself arrested in Wisconsin. What happened? Sock. Oh, the sock came off. <laughs> I love how you have a hand signal. You've done the sock so many times. You're such an expert. There's a hand signal for the sock has fallen. Yeah, the sock gesticulation. If wow. You will. Well, let's not go there. We won't. Um, you talk in the book about growing up and having these amazing experiences that that other people don't have when they're growing up. One of which is that you knew Cher when you were growing up. I, I think through your through your Dad? Father's ex-girlfriend went out with Sonny Bono, hang out, meet Cher, she becomes my friend. So Cher is your friend when you're a boy? 13, 14. 13, yeah. 14, and Cher babysits for you one night. She did one night, yeah. Tell me about that. Um, yeah, I guess because I wrote it in my book, I have to be willing to discuss that. It's in a book now, so I think, now. yeah. yeah. I'm like, um, well, I'm not talking about that. That remains secret forever. Oh, no, here it is. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got her permission. Okay, you got Cher's permission? I did. Good. I did. Um, I was 13 or 14, and Sonny and my father's girlfriend, Connie, went out for the night. Cher was staying home. They asked her if she would watch me for the night. She said, like, yeah, he can stay in my bed, and you guys get home 3 in the morning, come pick him up and take him away. So I was laying there in her bed. I was like, this is very wonderful, because I like this woman, and she's beautiful, and she's older, and I'm young, and I'm just starting to, you know, have these feelings. And she goes into the bathroom to change, and the door kind of goes open and, and I'm going okay I can see her now she's undressing and she undressed and I was just there being very uh, elated by the experience and, and she put on her nightie and she came to bed and you know we had a little chat and we both uh, and you're a, you're a 13 14 year old yeah, boy yeah. in bed with a pretty much naked share well she put on a nightie or something it doesn't matter no. that's the best <laughs> <laughs> a difference. Yeah. It's like not suddenly a bad story because she's got a nightie no, on. No. That's incredible. But you, uh, and then, uh, you know, I dreamed about things like that I when I was, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty amazing. It makes all for a good book. You also talk about, this is something that I, I think some of your fans wouldn't expect, but I guess maybe it makes sense. When you were young, you used to do shows in your basement and you would do Partridge Family shows. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a hit television show. Sure. And I watched it and I thought, hmm, entertaining looks fun. I'm gonna go in the basement, uh, play the record, act out these songs, invite kids to come, convince them that the Partridge Family are behind the curtain and charge them a quarter to come in. Right. This is, you know, sure. a long yeah. time ago. And, yeah. uh, and we made a little money and we danced around and it was kind of my first taste of uh, performance. Of what it's like to be in front of people, except instead of like a, a you know, a funk song coming out, or Red Hot Chili Peppers, it was I Think I Love You by, and, by, uh, and by the Partridge Family. And I did think that I loved her, yeah. Yeah, that's, yep. very, that's very cool. Do you still listen to the Partridge Family now? No, but I later moved to L.A. and met Keith Partridge. That's not his real name. <laughs> 
happy you didn't say, hey, Keith Partridge. Because he was probably like, that's not my name, man. No, Mr. Cassidy. Actually. Hey, Mr. Cassidy. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. All right. I read, I don't know if this is true, that when you're, and this is something that you do now for health reasons or that you can get something called ozone yeah, injection. What's an ozone injection and how can I get one? I, I don't think you want one. Okay. It's gnarly. It's illegal in this particular country. It's uh, illegal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is it? I don't even know what an ozone is. I know what ozone is. Lack yeah. of ozone. You must wear sunscreen. Yeah, it's a gas. It, it's kind of like um, oxygen, but mm -hmm. it's one molecule different. And if you like, you can inject it into your bloodstream and it sort of gets rid of virus or bacteria or fungus um, in the same way that you can put it into your pool and you don't have to use chlorine. Right. It's, so it's you a, get, so a, someone, is it a needle? Is it a... Ha there is a needle involved. There's a needle involved yeah. and, and ozone goes into your body. Gas. Yeah. And you're fine. Do you talk like Mickey Mouse or afterwards or yeah. something or for, for several hours? A couple hours? of days, yeah. Do you feel a difference after you have an ozone injection? It's, it's not discernible. You don't get high. You don't feel any lightheadedness. Then what's the point? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, well, afterwards, you can take care of your other... No, um, the point is because it feels right. like you're doing something... You're doing something for yourself. Yeah. Right. And why is it illegal in this country? Do you know? I don't know. It's legal in Germany. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Um, Scar Tissue, the book, has got a lot of fascinating stories in it, and you've get, led a fascinating life, and uh, you're still a young man. I have so, something for you. What's if I, that? If I may be so... Sure. What yeah. is this? Uh, my girlfriend last night, as we were falling asleep, drew that for you. Oh. Yep. Shot of this right here. This is me as your, uh... That's actually... That's very good, actually. Yeah. She's captured my fat Irish head. And, uh, and I like that I have a horn coming out of the front of my head. <laughs> well, it is, what is it called? The unicone? That, that's the unicone. Yeah, unicone. that's a fabled creature yeah. that roams, uh... She just, she just knocked that out as she was going to sleep. May yeah. I keep that? That's very of nice. Well, have. thank her for me. Uh, Scar Tissue uh, is in stores now, and uh, this was great having you on the show. Ver Please come back. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice, nice to, to meet you. Anthony Kiedis, we'll take a break and we come back. Rilo Kiley's here. Stick around.